Welcome to CTO Confessions with TC Gill. Brought to you by IT Labs. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This episode of CTO Confessions is brought to you by the one and only IT Labs, providing technology leaders with purpose driven development teams for high performance, innovation, and productivity. What more could you want? Please think of us like tech leaders' favourite off-the-shelf service, providing quality, high-performing teams off that shelf. And your host today is moi, TC Gill, IT Lab's Chief Talking Officer. And I'm speaking from the UK, London. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the philosophy of enlightened leadership in the tech space. Speaking to a CTO that's five startups in and leading stronger than ever. So our guest today is Alain. And he's going to tell his story of his journey and his wisdom about leading in the tech space. Hello, Alain. It's wonderful to have you here. Welcome to CTO Confession, sir. So this is Alain and uh, glad to be with you. Okay. It's great to have you. I know you're a very busy man. Uh, we've had previous conversations. Uh, so again, thank you for your time. Um, sure. So would you like to kind of introduce us yourself to the audience, uh, who you are and what do you do? Well, my name is uh, Alain Briançon. I'm uh, currently the Chief Technology Officer uh, for a startup called Cerebri AI. That's the fifth startup I'm involved in. And uh, what Cerebri AI does is uh, provide for Fortune 500 company and leveraging the data they've got in their system in multiple forms, uh, organizes uh, the information about their interaction with their customers And based on that, is able to measure uh, how customers uh, value their relationship with the brands, when they are ready to buy, what they are ready to buy, uh, and how to entice them uh, to buy. And that works for both uh, purchases, such as cars, uh, or taking on the loans, uh, or services such as uh, insurance uh, or telco and the like. Uh, I am located right now in Rockville, Maryland, since uh, in COVID, uh, we basically evacuated the city. Rockville is in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. My company is uh, scattered around three locations. Uh, Toronto, uh, Canada, which has a hotspot of very strong machine learning and AI talent. Austin, the headquarters, uh, and uh, and, uh, Washington, D.C. Wow. Okay. And, and the reason for it, uh, this distribution for the company, is that is there a just um, a random reason for that, or is there a? Uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, Jean Belanger, the CEO, this is his third startup. Uh, yes, two very successful exit uh, is in Austin. Right. Um, I've known Jean for twenty three years now. Um, he tried to convince me to uh, join him uh, in, in previous startups, but I wouldn't move to Austin. Um, uh, Toronto, uh, so the reason why there's an office in Washington, D.C., so it's like, fine, you're going to come. Uh, after it, I've done a, 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 a very unusual use of AI and, uh, and software. I says, okay, fine, then uh, you can start an office in D.C., which I thought, great, I'm going to work out of my house. Then he wanted a stepping plan, so actually, uh, we had an office, but of course now, no, we don't. And Toronto, um, uh, Toronto has a hotbed of talent, and it is really a key driver uh, for the financial economy in, uh, in, in Canada. And so it was a logical target for us to, to do. So we went from uh, Austin to Toronto, success with early customers in Toronto, and then opening Washington uh, you know, to complement the team. Yeah. Um, um, we, we are... Uh, maybe a, a third, a third, a third, so to speak. Uh, maybe a little more in Toronto. And uh, there's a lot of talent uh, in all three cities. So yes. uh, we learned to be distributed before COVID. Now we extremely distributed and uh, it's working great. Brilliant. Okay. So you, you've kind of uh, learned the, uh, you haven't had to go through the pain that many companies are having to kind of learn out there. It's, uh, it's a natural yeah. thing. Yes. It's, it's natural, but uh, one, uh, 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 I'm, I'm blessed. I mean, I know the word is overused, especially in the U.S. <laughs> during, during election season. Uh, but the, the staff we have is uh, very, very good. Uh, we are, uh, one, one gentleman, uh, his name is Sebastian, kind of noted during a recent meeting that we're working very well because we knew how to work together in the same place. So if you're building 
uh, a distributed organizations that have never been together, I don't think it will be as efficient as uh, if you've seen one another. And uh, um, uh, we, we, we know how each other is going to be thinking. I mean, uh, one, one of the things I like is people think differently. And, and just like you can have your in-laws visiting you or friends visiting you without visiting you, so to speak, we can do uh, the same uh, because we know one another. So yes. uh, we have the advantage of being extremely tight before COVID and that tightness has continued. Yes. Uh, but I, for one, and I don't think I'm the one, crave the moment where we'll be able to be in a safe place all at once, maybe for two, three days. Yes. And then this person can. Yes. I, and um, it, kind of going off my kind of uh, script here, but I, I think it's really interesting what you say there around, uh, you know, you, you were able to have that icebreaker uh, to develop those relationships and create that re rapport. Uh, yeah and very strong and then take that away um and it's interesting because uh, the experience i've had around teams is it's the same there you know you build up the rapport yeah. and then you can work separately because you kind of know each other you, you develop relationships and uh and connect. yeah yeah my 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 approach to think about the team is we we can become very close to one another and your friends um but when you're in a startup you are a clan and and i use this expression purposefully i could use also the word Try, but I, I think in a clan because uh, you have to to look for one another and you you have to look for uh, weaknesses and support and the like. Um, you know, can be in the middle of a very big push and someone has to take three hours off to take their kids to the doctor and so on. Yes. and it has to be understood by those who don't have kids and understand the elements. So uh, there's going to be you know this weekend a bunch of people are going to be working pretty hard. It happened to be Thanksgiving, as we're taping, there's going to be Thanksgiving in Canada on Monday, which is a day off. But yes. we know that we're going to need to meet because we have a commitment to a very significant a customer. And yes. you can only make that happen if you cut a little into the personal life, if you understand you know, the idiosyncrasies of, of each other's situation and then look at a client. And if, if the client is tight, then you can survive and adapt uh, and thrive during uh, these tough times. I mean, right now, um, uh, and, and we are, you know, early October uh, 2020. Uh, right now, our pipeline and the effort is strongest that it has ever been, wow. which you would not imagine. I would have never imagined that in March. Um, and the, the team holds because because we're a clan. Brilliant! I love that. I'm I'm glad I asked now because uh, uh, this idea of uh, creating relationships first, you know, really building on top of those. Because this is something that IT Labs Labs we do as well. We have a mantra relationship first you know uh, and yeah. it's will not align to and it's always served me well so so i think that's a real good uh, I mean, it, it also it also allows you when you have reviews um to be very direct yes um and um uh, our, our reviews can be brutal i mean <laughs> um because it's it's peer review we have to go very quickly um, uh, I'm not a strong believer of uh, we're going to do a code review, what does this mean, and so on. I mean, you know, when, 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 when you present your work, you're telling a story and you're creating an artifact for a time capsule, you know, that lasts a week, a month, three months, or to the next person comes. And you have to be very direct. Yes. And, and, and we have standards and you have to abide by them. And it's important because it allows you to create the artifacts that, you know, being code or, or methods or diagrams or whatever you that are going to be used by others right and if if you're not able to ask the very best of everyone and tell them you know what you know you can do better so can you please after this meeting spend two hours clean that up maybe have dinner half an hour later on yeah and then do it in a manner we can use in order to do that you have to have a relationship because otherwise you come across as a non-truster and a nagger yes you have to be you, you can take the same level of review of a technical work and come across as being um, a, a, a nagger, a second guesser, or a coach that is trying to drive from you something better that you know is inside you. And it's just small variations on the way you present things, the way you provide feedback, and the way you know one another. Yes. Um, and and that, that's why the human component um, it's so important. 
I think that's excellent wisdom. I, th- I think that's a, that's a real fundamental uh, for leadership and, and obviously the kind of audience that we're speaking to here, the, the technology officers, um, uh, to get that fundamental right because yeah. that transparency and that honesty and relationship, because there's a human element, of course, in all organisations, uh, ha- uh, creates continuous and, uh, and, and powerful kind of returns all, yeah. all along, all day long, you know? You have to, you have to be able to... Uh, you, you have to be able to tell the truth that people are not expecting and hope to survive and thrive. Excellent. The worst thing you can do is hide a bad result mm. if the result is going to have an impact. And the best thing is to bring it up and uh, build on it. Uh, I've modified the saying, I've got this uh, malapolism uh, approach to, 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 to my, my saying to say, whatever doesn't kill you improves your process improvement process. And, um, and I think the truth is, is we're all going to make mistakes. Um, and some are you know, because of sloppiness, you took a shortcut. The other one is because you approached the problem the wrong way or a wrong way. Yeah. Um, and uh, you have to be willing to, to support uh, people bringing bad news and admitting when you're right and when you're wrong. And I think especially for folks in leadership positions, you know, the C-suite or the V-suite, however you want to characterize it, when you've done something wrong or something silly, then just make, you know, bring it up. You can make fun of it. I throw myself under the bus on a regular basis. <laughs> We're running out of buses. Um, and uh, uh, because if you can be introspective and recognize, well, this was a stupid idea, yeah. um, then everybody gets it. It also forces you to make a better argument the next time around. We, we were dealing at one moment with a lot of work and I went through a cross entropy and entropy kick. I'm a huge fan of entropy. Um, uh, the digital one, Shannon, not, not as much as the, uh, the ones for, for Kelvin. And, and when I went, well, well, your entropy analysis went for, and we did it three or four times and it went nowhere. And so now it's like, okay, hoping this is not an entropy analysis fiasco again, can we try to do this? And now I know it puts the burden on me to bring a point which is more articulate. I can pull rank. It is very, very easy to pull rank. It is much more difficult to pull right. Yes. And uh, pulling rank is just, this is where I am. This is where you are. Pulling right is, this is what I know. This is what you know. And let's rig it out. And, and I think like having an approach of pulling it right is much better than pulling it rank. In some cases, of course, uh, I will. It's because uh, I think I earned it. But you have to be very judicious about when you do it. Yeah. And when you do it, you better be sure it's going to be done right. Yes. Yeah. I can imagine that. I, I love this idea of uh, radical transparency and, and, and speaking the truth, you know, because the truth uh, is the truth as much as we know it is. I think the truth hurts at times and, and, and what have you. And uh, it works in relationships. And. Uh, uh, I, I use it in, in my day life as much as possible and kind of know it's not there. And, and the challenge is, and, and you know, with, you know, unsettling experiences recently that we corrected for it, where you don't tell the truth and what have you, and everybody asks you, is this, this, is this, you know, it was an issue. The issue at hand was the presence of a specific variable in a specific database. It's in that one, yes. It's in that one, yes. Sure, it's in that one, yes. You sure it's in that one, yes. I checked the stuff. Everybody, yeah. And then we tell the customers it's in that one. And as soon as we ask for the documentation, then then it's not there. And when that transparency doesn't, uh, you know, uh, goes out and impact the business relationship, it's very, very bad. Yeah. So when you have a lot of smart people, it's okay to make a mistake and get it corrected at the beginning before it foster. Um, When it's toward the end of a project, then it's very bad. So uh, uh, I'm not sure it has too much to be radical transparency. To me, it has to be written transparency yes. because the, the written word, uh, we, I'm, I'm a stickler for, for, for documentation, right. um, um, is, 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 uh, uh, is what matters, is you've got a trace of what was going on. It's okay. Yeah. And then it forces a tremendous, in our case, it forces a tremendous amount of discipline because as, 
uh, we use Confluence from the the the, the game from um, whatever called Atlassian, yeah. Atlassian. And uh, and and it means you've got lots of pages, and it means on a regular basis you've got is this deprecated? Doesn't it use? If it's deprecated, use the word deprecated and reorganize it and what have you. So, yes, yeah. there is an overhead that comes from it, but but you 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 get a truth from which a newcomer to the team or a newcomer to the projects can build. Uh, and she can be, or it can be effective as quick as possible. So um, uh, documenting things well, the things that work and don't work, and yeah. you know, the design that you rejected is, is just as important at times as the, the design uh, you've accepted. And one of the things I insist when we make selections of algorithms or methods, we have a very, very elaborate tech, uh, to put it mildly, um, is tell me the thing you didn't choose, because when someone is going to look later on, you will have you would have to justify what you chose, what you did. But yeah. it also says, "Oh, I didn't know this stuff existed. I'm a little curious." Yes. Double click, double click, double click, and now you build alternate ways to do things. Yeah. Um, and 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 so this transparency, which to me is a transparency of documentations and the way you make the the the, the elements, is not as radical as some people might think it is but it is massively powerful. Yeah. Um, so around the subject of documentation, because I, I agree with you that documentation is important. Uh, one of the misconceptions around being an agilist um, is that one of the values talks around delivering work over comprehensive documentation. Um, that gets misused a lot. You know, because yeah. what you find is that people basically took all documentation out the window, which is not what the, the values are saying. So, um, in terms of striking that balance, how do you strike that balance? Because I see lots of situations where that documentation will create better onboarding, reflection uh, 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 by the writer themselves. He or she will be yeah. able to, as they're writing it. Well, how do you find that balance? Uh, it, it is one of the most difficult uh, area there is because there is a there is the hard delivery and the soft delivery. And documentation at times is referred to as the soft delivery. Um, if someone during the review says, I'm going to do this stuff and I'll do it afterwards, and they've not been around the block, I can watch the body language on Zoom teams or whatever tool we're using for everybody else, like, oh, this is coming. Speech 14.7 from Alain about, I don't want to hear the word after, I want to hear the word during. The incremental mental focus it takes to document something after the fact is an order of magnitude, at least, worse than if you're doing while you're doing it. Yes. And so the way you, 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 you force things is we run agile. Some are sprint, some are kabam, depending on uh, the project. So there's a stand up every day. And I'm going to try to attend as many as I can, fully understanding that as the CTO, uh, I perturb the system. I'm a strong believer in quantum mechanics. We've already established the entropy. Uh, so if I observe the system, I perturb the system. Um, but I attend there to try to get a sense of where things are going. And then the question will be, and where is this documented? And where is this documented? And where is this documented? Um, uh, we, we, uh, and where is this documented is uh, probably the same thing that Kamala Harris was doing during the recent vice president <laughs> debate where every third is like, I'm speaking, Mr. Vice President. So to me, it's where is this documented? It's kind of my equivalent. Um, I voted it already some time. And, uh, and, uh, so, uh, you, 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 it, it, it becomes part of the mantra. So it has to get the elements. Now the level of documentation is. Uh, we don't debate documentation, we debate levels of documentation. Uh -huh. Two things. One, there's design and two is code. Code, code, you're telling the story to, I was trying to do this and this is the rationale behind it. Not the, I'm doing this, not going to do that, not going to do it, and whatever. My intent is to do this and these are the broad selection I take. So I don't like the line by line comment. It's, you know, paragraph every now and again tells you this is the intention. Because documenting code is telling someone nine months from now, this is what you were trying to do. Yes. The coding standards and the like uh, will take care of the rest. You know, common variables and so on and so forth. And those are easy to fix. But you're basically creating this artifact for the person who is going to build on your shoulder of giant. So are you a giant with shoulder on which things are going to be built or not? And if you work on this, I think 
uh, it, it's, uh, it helps. It makes the design reviews uh, a little more informal. Right? Yeah. When you're looking into the design of machine learning algorithms or methodology to do the uh, uh, data extraction, the ETL process, uh, the EDA process and what have you, then um, you have to really document what you found. Mm -hmm. So there is documentation of intent and documentation of findings. And those have to be handled in a very different, very different manner. Uh, the documentation of findings, one of the important elements that I insist on is everybody uses the same words. Sounds like, what do you mean? Everybody does. No. Some people say features and variables. Now, what is it? What is the same thing? If it's the same thing, pick a name and stick to it. Yes. So it's a feature, period. Is it a basic feature or an advanced feature? What do you mean by advanced? Well, what I mean, it's like he uses two variables. So it's a bivariate feature. Yeah. And we, we said there's a table, this is the vocabulary, and everybody uses it. Because every time you have these small ambiguities, you, 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 you introduce a probability of error, and it doesn't, reinforce, it doesn't reinforce the building block aspect of things. Yes. There, the, the, the rule is it has to be seen by the eye of, of the reviewer as being standalone. And um, um, that's the way to enforce it. Now, there has been cases where very pressed for time and, and, I, and I heard like, well, either we deliver the code in order to do this affinity model for this specific element of our platform. We have a pretty comprehensive software and AI platform. The, the, it's told, the, the, you don't know where the AI ends and the software begins. I mean, this is that complicated. So as well, I either do this or that with the thread that I'm holding the data it says, okay, you will do both. And I will take upon myself to go to my boss, Jean, and tell him we're late because of something I did. So I'm removing your leveraging point and I'm putting it on me. And at that point, you, the, the person pushing back has lost the argument because you're going to say, okay, you don't have a boss, you know, Alain's going to put himself uh, under. Um, and, 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 you know, you, 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 you're not able to say it's A versus B and the like. Um, uh, and, and if people don't get with the program, then they don't get with the program and, you know, bad things happen, which is extremely rare, but you have to be willing to, to do so. So the, 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 the documentation has to be written always with the eye of the, the, the beholder. Um, when we engage with a customer, we at, on our platform we deliver things at times as quickly as a you know, single-digit number of weeks, or it can much much longer. You know, when you deal with massive corporations, just getting the rights to get variables and features and whatever you can 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 last and last. Uh, but we have to report on a continuous basis. You know, we're making progress. I mean, if you're asking people, you know, that they're going to pay us a license that is a half a million dollar a year, a million dollar a year and more respect to our platform, while you are proving that it works, you can't wait and say, in nine months, I'll tell you, please write a check now just in case. So there is an ongoing level of documentation, communication to the customer, and that gets built from what we do. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, that's what you have to enforce. Um, another rule that I've learned from a very good boss of mine, that early in my career, his name is Dr. Abdul uh, Amid Rana, and it was my second job out of school, is whenever you write documentation, write it with three different audiences in mind. Wow. And, um, uh, you, and so you have to think, what are the audiences I'm writing for? And then what are we going to get out of it? And at times you just have two audiences and that's enough, go to three. But the idea of, 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 of something that is seen by others is, is very important. The last aspect of documentation, which some people might, might throw on because uh, come on already, is uh, presentations that uh, we, we do. Um, um, and there it forces uh, the presenter to um, uh, crystallize her ideas or his ideas in as few words as possible um, and really distill uh, the, the, the insight that, uh, that comes out. And what I found, especially on people that are doing research, I mean, we have a, a group of dedicated PhDs, or we have 
well, everybody is dedicated. We have a group of PhDs dedicated to do AI research in, in our team. Wow. And at times, they're just sort of results and what have you, and forcing them to put like, okay, explain these slides in 15 words and no less. And once you go to this, they distill the essence of their creation and of their creativity. And at times, it becomes very powerful, and, and at times, they don't realize, um, uh, you know, the breathtaking, the, the impactful uh, element of what they've created, because when you see it in the giant confluence page with lots of words and so on, you can get lost and whatever. But when you've got to write it in a very simple to understand and limited um, uh, a format, um, that level of documentation emerges the insight. And, and the, the rule I use is what would the headline in the New York Times be for that slide? Yeah. which you tell the entire story of the slide and the entire story of what you're doing. And yeah, time it's painful, you know, but I don't want to see, you know, this is, this is the Shapley analysis of variable. Okay. Yes, I know. I can look at the diagram. What does it tell me? What would a good writer in the New York times say about this result? Yes. Well, well what it really says is, uh, uh, we get a lot of information from uh, capturing the intent when they're complaining and calling the support center, okay? So what does that mean? Support center information determines everything. Okay, what does it mean? I need to leverage the support center information for maximum impact. What does it mean? Maximum impact leverages and what, okay. And, and, and yes. so what you find out of this process, which in this case has to be interactive, is that you distill the insight yeah, and, and what I found is it's the level of documentation and often because it's done in a small group, you know, uh, half a dozen or so going through, through a process between the presenter and myself and others. Yeah. Is that at the end you walk taller. Yes. It, it, it's like, darn. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is really cool. And yes. I can really use it. What I love about what you're describing here, I, I, I wasn't expecting to drill down into documentation uh, as much as we have, but this is really interesting because I think a lot of organizations do uh, stumble over this. And I love how you say uh, it's it's a real, really difficult balance to create. But what you've described here is is that, you know, by actually focusing on the description of what you've done is to kind of create that headline story, you know, yes. uh, so people can relate to it easily. And that creates another dimension of interactivity to that work and also potentially a synergy later on, you know? Oh, uh, absolutely. We, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we have found, we have developed this technology called the steam engine um, that allows us to manage the processing of data not at a table level, but at the column and the row level. And that's the way we're able to process and run AI at streaming speed. And the way you do things is you take a problem and you decompose into transformer, we call them STM transformers, and they get connected together through a directed acyclic, acyclic graph, a DAG. And what I'm starting to think more and more is the way the organization work, it's also a DAG. You've got these nodes, everybody and their projects, and they get kind of get a line, and it's not massively structured, but we go from the left to the right, and 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 this this is what the right documentations and and standard can do, and 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 it builds. And once you realize that what you do impact the ability of other people to build on top of what you have, I think you think in different perspective. Hmm. Um, uh, it might be a cliche that in some organization is you know it's off my desk and I'm done. If you know that it goes from your desk to someone else's desk, and what matters is what they do with it, I think it totally oh, yes. um, uh, uh, changes the perspective uh, that, that, that you'll take. Um, we, we, we had a review, um, our, our, our products, which takes the, the corporate data, processes it, processes it, processes it. When we select the parameters of the enhancement technique we use, we do a lot of feature engineering in, in our approach. Then we have modeling techniques and what have you. So we have these very intricate pipelines. Uh, the simplest one has 11 stages. Um, and we call all these block modelors because we had to come up with a name. So model, model, modelor. I'm French, or means gold. It's a golden model, modelor, close enough. Okay. Oh. And, we, and we, we put those, so they're very complicated. And these modelor gets transformed into transformers and there might be 40 of them to generate a single output. And the optimization, 
There's a lot of work in AI on auto ML and the optimization can be brutal and you have to run cases and cases. Uh, two of our, our team members, um, we, we came up with the, 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 the idea says, well, this is kind of a sensing problem. So we're gonna take internal measurements uh, of different measures for these different modelers hmm. and we're gonna keep them in a database and we're gonna see what we do with them. So you've got a lot of insight about how things have been running and these very strange uh, parameters and just because I like also thermodynamics, back again, we call them temperature. <laughs> yeah. We have temperatures and pressures. So we're still looking into what we're going to call a volume. So we'll have, you know, uh, perfect gas law. And so we're going to this. And these engineers find a way to predict the performance of a pipeline that has never been existed by just looking at this intermediate variable, which is auto ML on steroids plus steroids plus steroids, you know, presidential level steroid level. Right. And... And when we go through this, and you, you, you walk away, and like, so to the rest of the team, once a, once a week, we have a one hour tech team meeting. I'll go through what's happening with the business, and what am I gonna be spending my time on over the next week, so you don't have any surprise when email's coming through, then we do a deep dive into different elements. And what we do, and you were talking about synergies, everybody has, you know, we have somewhat of a template. Uh, also, some people give an update once a week, twice a week, or once a day, depending on the nature of the job. So everybody is, if you come to me and says, I was not aware that something was going on, it means you're not reading the five emails you're getting at the end of the day because you shouldn't. But once you see kind of all the synergy and how the dots connect and how they can connect, it's a very empowering uh, element because you might be working on this very esoteric streaming congestion management of data and you might be looking on the advanced form of uh, deep learning to do reinforcement learning on the other, but you're seeing all these dots and they get, they get connected. And thus you belong and you're part of a clan and your work is, is, is part of this fabric. So you've got the human fabric between the different contributor and then you've got the project fabric between the different components you have. And when the two work and you're able to push one another and you're able to laugh with one another I think you've built a technology base and you've built a people base um, that can thrive, both from a tech point of view as well as a, from, from, a, from, a, from a people point of view. Excellent. I mean, that's a win-win, isn't it? I mean, that's a win-win yeah. capitals, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, it is. It is uh, you, you know, uh, you want to work for a winner. You, 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 you want your career. I mean, I, I joke at times, especially with uh, people who are starting, is, is my job is to make them more and more valuable, so I've got to fight for them not to be stolen. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and we have attrition uh, as any organization. And, and at times they're able to say, you know, I know you want to leave and so on and so forth. You need to give us three months because this is where we will be and it will look better on your resume. It will be in a better position when you look onto, onto the, 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 the yellow element. Yeah. So, the, 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 knowing that you have an impact, you, you could be the smartest person in the world and, and being you know, self-centered and everything. Can, but if your work does not matter, uh, you're not contributing. And I think it, it's you inside. You want everybody, I think, at the end of the day, wants to be impactful. Yeah. And, and wants to see themselves recognized. And whether you're looking at it from... Uh, uh, you know, Minslow uh, pyramid of, of, of needs or, or something, you know, from a religious, you know, your, your, your faith and whatever and so on. There is the expressions of one's creativity and the relevance of one's creativity and the recognition is, is one that I think drives us pretty much uh, yeah. uniformly, you know, regardless of background. And I think that's our, our, our role as, as, as CTOs from, you know, the empowerment of staff is to create that environment and then celebrate when it works Brilliant. and being able to be introspective and retrospective when it doesn't. So you're trying to do better the next time. Live in, uh, deep in the learning, afford some yeah, that's a deep, yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of deep learning per yeah. se from a machine learning point of view because I think it's overly expensive for what it does. Yeah. It's nice to have good results, but I like not to spend $10,000 of uh, cloud money in order to get it done. Yeah. If I get, get something 3% uh, less, but uh, 100 the cost. Yeah. But from, from an organizational point of view, it's inherently deep learning. Yeah. 
So, so, so what you've described here, I mean, actually, this, uh, what we're discussing here is, is really valuable for a tech leaders out there because one of the things that I think many tech leaders find is trying to get that enthusiasm, get that belonging. Um, I love this idea because this is one of the, the reasons why I'm so attracted to Agile is, is it creates a belonging where we yeah. work as a team and we're delivering um, uh, great, not just good stuff, great stuff. Yeah. So how did you come about this kind of philosophy of leadership and the tech leadership? What, what brought you about this kind of realization? Uh, well, as the video can change, I'm, uh, I, was not, I was born at night, but not born last night. So it's many years of, of doing it. I've been um, uh, I, I, paid, I, I, I tried to learn from lives. Uh, uh, as much as I could, I had I had good successes. I was uh, fired from two jobs, uh, uh, and uh, uh, thumbs up. Basically, not necessarily, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I had to deal. That, but thank you for playing along. No, no, and and so I had I had my my ups and downs. I had like uh, absolutely sure I was doing the right thing, and then figuring I was not, and then uh, then. Um, I, I was given opportunities that I was not expecting, and I was to uh, rise to the occasion. So it's it's a matter of of learning. I also had been very very lucky um, that I had had bosses that taught me a lot of things on the, on, on what matters, um, and and I could go boss by boss by boss and things that I got that I got from them. Right. Um, uh, Dr. Amin Rana was, uh, let's anticipate what, what a merger of products or combination of products would do and how to document. And I learned a lot from him. Uh, Julie Scheimer was another boss I had, um, uh, who was uh, very good into you know, having short meeting, being very effective uh, about it. Um, uh, uh, Howard uh, Goldberg was uh, with uh, Into Digital. It's a uh, uh, you know, empowered me to, to, that was my first CTO job, empowered me to, to, to build an organization. We didn't know what it was. We just knew it was needed and kind of our way through it. And, and, uh, and I've learned the, my job is to create business options yeah. and participate into the selection of the business options. But inherently, the jobs of the technologies is to create as many business options as, as lower cost as possible. Yeah. Um, as effectively as possible. And the job of the business folks is to take advantage of those options at the most opportune moment uh, to, to drive the business. And, and that interrelationship was, was, was very important. When I jumped into, into the startup business, um, uh, I had twice to be a CEO. And so I learned, uh, as a good friend of mine, Tom Scholl tells me, is, uh, well, once you have to meet payroll and you have to fundraise, you'll be a different man and then you can call yourself a CEO. And like, okay. And so you learn, uh, you learn from that. So it, it's, it's, a, you know, it, it's a matter of uh, try to absorb everything there, there is and realize you can only shape the future. Yeah. Uh, my uh, late father-in-law, uh, Dr. John Lastavica, uh, has a saying that is, every decision you've made is the right one. And you have to be very careful the way he was saying it because there is a past tense and a present tense. Every decision you've made is the right one, not was the right one, is the right one, which means you can only look forward. And so uh, the, the idea is, is uh, go ahead, look forward as best as you can. One of the things that was probably the most transformative for me was uh, the first startup I was involved in, Entera. I'm an electrical engineer in computer science by training, I went to MIT and it was, you know, a lot of uh, wireless system and satellite system and more wireless system and the wireless system and another wireless system and then some wireless stuff. And then I was like, okay, I've been there, done that. And so when Howard Goldberg, who was my boss at InterDigital, became the CEO of Entera, he says, why don't you come over and what have you? I said, I don't want to do a startup. I didn't know what it was, scary, you know, payroll thing. And, and I've done stuff. He says, oh, this is chemistry and rheology. What do you mean? It's molecules that change color and you have to print them. Wow. And I'm like, oh, this is totally different. Great. I can totally fail at this. <laughs> and if I fail, but if I fail, it's because I went beyond not as much my comfort zone, which the startup was, but my knowledge zone. Yeah. 
And so the business was in Pennsylvania and Ireland, which was great because I spent one week a month in Ireland, which is great. Uh, you know, pint, Bangor Mash was my first dinner every night on the Monday. And uh, just don't talk about uh, the way the French are playing soccer and holding their hand with the Irish, but you know, I don't mention it more. And, uh, so, um, and, and so I went. And I'm like, well, this is engineering. It's yeah. system engineering. I'm a system engineer. This is system engineering. Right. And I failed for six months. And I failed for six months because I took my way of thinking and said, I can apply it to chemistry, the synthesis of molecule, and to rheology, which is uh, 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 and, and, you know, physics of the whatever. And what I realized, and this was to me one of the most transformative component of, of, of my uh, professional life, is I had to start thinking on how to think. Mm -hmm. I, I had to step back. In, 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 in computer systems, you have a something, you create an API. What's an API? An API is like, I'm cutting. Okay. You don't like the baby? Uh, whose baby is it? I'm not cutting the middle, you know, very biblical there. And, uh, and okay. So the golden knot can be resolved because we're going to cut in the middle of it. And, you know, this system gets optimized and that system optimized. You do your work and uh, provided that everything aligns, up it goes. In chemistry, it's all about rate. It's a balloon. You squeeze it on one side, something happens on the other and whatever. And for six months, I kind of was trying to apply my thinking process to a new domain. I mean, I'd done chemistry in my undergraduate, not as much as electrical engineering, applied it. And I realized I was, think I was thinking, but I was not thinking how to think. And once I stepped back, and once I realized that there were different ways of approaching there that were just as valid the car came on. And this is why, for instance, when we've done, you know, jumping ahead on, on the staffing for, um, for Cerebri AI, where I now work, we have people with different, different background because you have to cherish and you have to realize that different history of thinking problems are just as valid as yours. Yeah. And now you can compare and contrast and add on. And, and that's, that, that was very transformative. What also was very transformative is the staff, which was mostly non-electrical engineer at the startup and Terra, was supportive. And they gave me a lot of rope to right. hang myself, getting a sense that at the <laughs> end, um, uh, uh, I would not hang myself or I would step in, you know, whatever, you, wherever you want to you know, dramatize this and, and help. And once the stuff was, was clicked and it was great, to at the end, I was, you know, conceptualizing molecules, which was great, uh, and then helping in all of the processes. Um, and and that, that, uh, that was very, very, very transformative. The company went south because we weren't out of money and so on. Yes, so you yes. learn about payroll, fundraising, and all that good thing. Um, but at, that's the point at which you realize that everyone different perspective can help. And it allows you to be very effective in an environment where the disciplines needed to bring a products are are multiple You're right and and you have to have a very wide spectrum of of approaches and it forces you to translate things from one domain to the next and being willing to be the translator when needed and it's not condescension says well you don't understand this. No, what he meant by that is that let me give you an analogy am i using the right analogy and so on and the more you're doing it and the more you're conveying that everybody has to translate to a certain degree, yeah. which is another form of documentation, so to speak, it's, you know, knowledge transfer, then things become, become uh, uh, very powerful. So I had, I had the luck of very strong formative bosses uh, and, and then the right process. And Jean Belanger, who is the, the CEO of Cerebri, I was a friend, so it's kind of a interesting relationship because he's going to push me. He's going to push me very hard. And we yes. both work very, very hard. Uh, he's like, he's, he's older than I am and he works like even more insane hours than, than I do. Um, what from him is what I've learned and relearning every time is, okay, you identify the problem and tell me what the solution is. Right. Bang, bang, bang. And why did you choose the solutions and why do you get the elements? And in this case, the documentation that you have to do is the mental acuity of you know why you're thinking the way you are explain it you know uh, is this an opinion 
or is this a fact? You're right. And, and that's and and that thing is a very it, it sounds trivial, but when you've got a lot of knowledge, when you know this is called machine learning and data science. You know, people talk about data science. It's really data craft because you have to get your history and your insight and the business knowledge and whatever you. So you have to be careful that uh, 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 you, you distinguish between opinions and facts and you're waiting there. So what I'm learning and relearning from him, because I'm constantly learning and I learn until uh, uh, the day uh, I die, is, is uh, uh, are you sure? Or are you guessing, not guessing and so on? And when you don't know, mm-hmm. just say, I don't know. Yes. And then you can guess. But it says, I'm making a guess now. And, and there are a lot of decisions where we have to, to we, we make choices on the you know, pricing model and what have you. It says, what do you think is going to work the best? This thing, oh, I'm not sure. Guess. And, 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 and bringing guessing at the right level with respect to decision making, as long as you understand where it comes from, yeah. very legit. But you have to be, here you have to be radical transparent into what you know, Versus what you think, yeah, and 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 that's transformative. So uh, it's it's uh, there is yeah multi, multiple arts. I think to 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 those uh, you know people listening and, and watching this podcast. My my one advice is try to think out to think and and realize that your your uh, the way you're approaching is one method out of many methods that are totally valid, and then question. Uh, question whether something that is taken for granted is the truth. Hmm. Uh, when I was at Interdigital, one of uh, the sharpest engineer I know, uh, and the guy who is even more inventive than I do, his name is Steve Goldberg, no relation with the CTO, uh, the, the CEO. Um, there was a uh, there's this process in, uh, in processing uh, in, in Antenna, uh, wireless, and it's like, uh, it's called MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, and there is this rule of thumbs about the number of signal you can extract based on the number of independent elements you have in your antenna. And, and Steve asked where you know, was a specific rule on the number of signal you could extract vis-a-vis the number of independent little antenna elements. And you see these antenna elements in um, wireless routers and in phones and so on. And everybody says, well, it's one-on-one type of a deal, you know, two signal, two antenna, three signal, three antennas. And I was like, where is this written? Well, it's well known. It's well known. And for an entire month, the, the, uh, he asked the question, it's well known. And what? You? And the point of the matter is, it was an urban legend, de facto. So he says, I can't see it written anywhere, the well known. He questioned it and he had some breakthrough results because he questioned it. Wow. And that's, again, the thing that every now and again, um, if everybody thinks the same way, but you can't really tell what was the you know, inception concept and now it's verified it's totally okay to go back in time yeah and then kind of extract it out it's tricky if you've got pressure on a project and so on and so forth yes so there are different environments that you have to create yeah but but the willingness and the support of folks that are going to question a fundamental assumption yeah is something that you've got to do and you've got to get a sense of this is worth trying it. And, and that was another transformative event. Yes. Yeah. I, I love this idea of people questioning the fundamentals because I think too many people um, see, I guess it's kind of a belief system, really. Um, yeah. people, but, you know, take things for, for fact and are they really a fact or are they relevant now? Um, and, so, and, 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 and to be able to, to the point and kind of link it to different elements, is if you've got people that are coming from a physics background or mathematical background, the de facto questions everything. It's it's in the world of verification and it's a world of building on things that are differently. I mean, you're looking into, you know, thermo theorems and and some rules, you know, there's a lot of very interesting work going with a number of theories and and the like. Yeah. And, And that's a domain where you question all the thing all the time. And I get the element, and it's only in engineering where, um, and you know, the limit between physics and engineering, you know, it's all blurry at times. But it's always engineering where we take things for granted and we build on top of it, especially in software. Yes. And every now and again, it's worth checking it. Yes. Uh, so software is likely to be the one, whether it's traditional software or machine learning, where you question the least. 
But every now and again, it, it has to be questioned. Some, some of the most interesting, we have great results with respect to propensity models in, in our platform. And the reason is because we decided to encode time in a different manner. And it was not natural. One guy says, hey, why don't you do it that way? It's like, well, no one does it that way. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. Gee, Satish, this is a good idea. Hmm, what would happen? Run the thing, you know, accuracy got up by 20%. Like, okay, wow. let's write the patent now. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's, that's very interesting just by taking a different route. I love this idea of experimenting. I mean, this is kind of a, a deeper form of experimenting. You're really going back, taking, taking a step back, back, you know. And, 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 and with, which means that when someone, uh, uh, and so everything is integrated, everything is a DAO, uh, um, is when you document it, then you say, you know, I checked this and it didn't seem to be relevant. And just writing, I checked this, it doesn't be relevant. Or these are the things I consider and never used, or I didn't pursue and so on gives you, first of all, it makes you more honest with yourself. Yeah. It conveys a stronger foundation going forward, uh, but it gives permission to re-examine. Yeah, yeah. Being, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I re-looked at that thing that uh, uh, Emma or Roy or Jenny didn't decide to pursue, um, and that didn't work for me either. But in this case, it kind of worked. And so this, this is where... Everything has to be incremental and, and building and getting systematically because it it'll, it it gives you the permission to be uh, uh, to to to, to re-examine things. Uh, I, I get three I'm getting, you know three job hof, uh, job hunter emails. You know I, I heard you hiring blah blah blah. I can help you. I've got this candidate. Can I send you the resume? And the answer is no. You can send me only an MI stack and a single different. And this doesn't meet there because we have a criteria on GPAs. I mean, we're, we're pretty finicky uh, yeah. into the people we're hiring and for all the right reasons. And then after a while, you know, I'll, I'll entertain that. It's kind of, you know, can multiplex with other activities and says, you know, what are you looking into, uh, into someone? You know, what is the primary thing you're looking into an engineer? And my answer is they have to be curious. Wow. And being curious is having the, the ability to say why and why not. That are the two most important questions you can have in engineering. Plus, they give themselves permission to fail. Plus, they give themselves permission to explore. Being curious, curious doesn't mean being adventurous. It's just like being open. It means listen to others. Yeah. It's, it's mean insisting that what you hear makes sense and so on and so forth. And being curious means also you're going to solve problems very differently. We have a very talented uh, a machine learning engineer, and she comes with an atmospheric science background. Yeah. And then she learned data science on top of it. And the way she approaches things are very different. Now, someone would say, well, gee, uh, you know, did it help or not? Well, we do a lot of things with time series. Hmm. A lot of things to help people sell to consumers. There are cycles. There are seasons. We know there's a seasons for everything. Um, and so is the impact of El Nino, El Nina, and long-term uh, atmospheric uh, patterns and oceanographic patterns, is there some kind of the way you think about it interrelationship with seasonal thing? Mm. Yes. Did we know what it was going to be? The way we were leveraging differently from other? Absolutely not. Right. But if you bring someone we know is going to think about the problem differently than you are because she wants to use her PhD knowledge and her insight on what have you, you just know you created an environment where if there's a different and better way, yeah. it has to be better, yeah. way to approach it, at least you've given yourself the ingredient yes. to make it work. You've got to nurture it and so on and so forth and what have you. So the thing about thinking about thinking and celebrating it is is to me the very important and 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 building on top of an inherent curiosity yeah excellent that's that's great uh, so i've got some curiosity around that then so sure. when you, one of the things you find in many organizations that they're they're redlining they're, there's not really much space to think you know or um or there's limited space to think how do you kind of ensure that your engineers and and developers and and researchers aren't redlining so they've got that space to be be able to creative either side of 
That's a very good question. I think it depends on where the discipline is. I mean, we've got engineers that are, that are sorry, engineers who are being human beings, uh, the engineers who are, are designing widgets for our user interface and the like. So develop the style, get the slide agree, the style agree by everybody. Uh, that 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 should agree. We should agree. Good Lord, I'm better than wood today. It's not doing well. <laughs> we should agree uh, and then stick to it. Um, and there, so the red line is in bold style and the like. Uh, you've got some redlining with respect to performance. Uh, if you're looking through API, when do you look at Elasticsearch? When don't you don't? Um, you know, how do you scale things up with respect to performance and whatever you? So here you are limited inherently by the technology components. So you cannot go, you know, too far out. Uh, when when you're looking into um, the, the 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 development of uh, the steam engine, and you start with white spaces, and as the team and the leadership makes decision, they will tell us, and they will at time tell me, okay, we went from yappy the box to now this box and that other box. Um, for the machine learning algorithms, uh, which is to a certain degree. Um, the same thing as doing uh, molecular synthesis. Um, you start with a big red, uh, you know, no red line, and then the team collectively starts to shrink, shrink, and shrink, and then yeah. create different options. And the reason why I'm linking the two is the richness of tools and the richness of, you know, through GitHub and repos and open source and what have you, the ability to put stuff together. Um, uh, when I grew up, you know, we only 16 bit processor and uh, Fortran and C and C++ and uh, I went to Java and then, you know, stop the nonsense. Uh, but now uh, the kids, uh, they have all kinds of stuff and get put together. So it's almost like chemistry. And so um, what matters uh, is not that you can put something together. What matters is you can put together that makes sense and, and, and creates a advantage compared to previous implementations or the end results create an advantage for the, for the business. Right. So you, you um, the, the redlining there is with respect to the tool you use, it's a pretty, you know, the lines are far away and what have you. But the line that not matters is the tools are so powerful. Uh, the libraries are so prevalent that for you to be good, that's the line that you've got to climb. And to a certain degree, you've got this counter effect of the availability of technology is now so widespread that the burden is on the creativity, the burden is on the curiosity, mm. the, the, the burden is on making sure that what you do creates a business option because the ability to create now is very simple. I mean, I'm bad Python coder. We do a lot of work in, in Python and Scala. So I can go and I do that typically on Saturday afternoon to relax. Um, uh, uh, to, to, to kind of sell top my shelves so to use, you know, pandas and so I can learn and all these other things. The fact that I can do it tells me it's pretty available to everybody. So the thing that matters the most now is why did you analyze the way you are and what have you, and how do you make sure that uh, the end product you provide creates a advantage for the company that can be seen from the outside? Yeah. I mean, if you go to my LinkedIn profile, it's like uh, big data without a business case is uh, BS, and I don't like BS. <laughs> and um, uh, it, it has to be relevant. Yes. And uh, that's, that's another component that I think is important with respect to managing your technology team is technology for technology's sake is, is not worth it. You, your job is to create business options. Options, yeah. And realize, realize in some cases they're not going to be chosen, and that's totally okay. Mm. Um, you know, you, you don't freak out if you decide to eat uh, the, froze, the, the, the leftover cold pizza that you got last, last night or kind of the cucumbers that are kind of going bad and whatever. And you make those choices. Yes. Uh, so, you know, same with the, the, the business. But if you can connect to it, then you're yeah. going to realize that, that what matters is building things that make sense. Yes. And building things that can be built upon. So the, 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 the red line... If, if you've got the right connection to the business and realizing that you cannot be cookie cutter, I think the red line issue 
um, uh, uh, solves itself. The most important line in, the, in my book or is the green line, the one toward the, the moulins, mm -hmm. the dollars or local currency, if you're watching this outside the US, um, uh, which is uh, creating, creating, creating value, yeah. uh, creating a, 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 a business option. Yeah. Uh, that can be leveraged by the marketing and sales and business development and so on and so forth. Beautiful. Excellent. Um, I mean, I was hoping to uh, initially to kind of cover that, uh, the title of your LinkedIn page, which is, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, big data without big business case is, is BS or big BS. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, I mean, it looks like uh, we've kind of run out of time. So I was hoping to kind of tunnel into that. Yeah. Maybe you'll be available again for maybe to kind of cover sure. that another time. Um, yeah. But there's absolutely tons and tons of wisdom here. It's been really, really good uh, speaking to you. And, uh, and, uh, and I've kind of spotted a number of, of really kind of quotable topics uh, around this. So hopefully we'll be able to tunnel, in, tun tunnel into them a little bit more in, uh, when we kind of release this podcast. Sure. But, um, so, so in terms of a kind of key takeaway for our, uh, along, alongside all the other takeaways that you've given, uh, for tech leaders out there, what would be would be your kind of parting kind of comments to them? The, your your biggest advice. My 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 uh, <clears throat> my biggest advice um, is you are you are one out of many, and uh, don't ever forget it. Um, you're not smart by title. You're not smart by company. Um, um, you are smart in different ways. Um, so uh, realize it's one of many. Um, and I boil them down to two things. One is learn to think how to think. Force yourself to say, is this the right way to think about this problem? Is this the right way for me to think about approaching it before jumping into the solution? And in some cases, the answer is going to be, yeah, I know what it is and so on, but force yourself um, and it opens your curiosity and, and the like. The, the, the other one um, is celebrate creation in all of its form. Um, we just finished the high holidays uh, for 5781. I'm Jewish, so um, uh, it's going to be relaxing. <laughs> and um, and uh, they're saying that uh, the Bible boils down to uh, Cain asking, am I my brother's keeper uh, after he kills Abel? And of course, the answer is yes, you are. And everything is a commentary. There's a lot of people that try to distill the, uh, the, the, the Bible, uh, the Torah to this. Uh, I go further up to Genesis, which is uh, God created man in his image on the sixth day. And what this teaches me is the process of creation is the closest thing to a higher level of impact. Mm -hmm. If you're able to create, you are divine to a certain degree. And I'm not a very religious person, Mrs. Zimmerman, yeah. uh, although my faith is becoming more and more important as I get old for probably the right reason. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, a Bayesian approach to things, uh, P of A given B. Um, but uh, regardless, uh, uh, the process of creation of any matter is to be is to be uh, revered and 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 uh, celebrated and the like. And it could be into something that works the first time. It could be into you know, I've put all nighters. I've been pulling as this company. You know, I'm 60. There was 58 years old and so on, and working like a maniac, and and what have you. And and uh, my girlfriend next door, you know, trying to go to sleep. It's 4 a.m. To where it is? Yeah, and it works. And it's just the joy. There is something about. I mean, I have three three wonderful children, and there's something fantastic. You go into the room with six of you, and you come back with seven of you. I mean, this is like, wow, wow. and and. But there's the same thing about you go into the room and someone's going to present something and you know that, that it's different because something was created. It works the first time. This is a new way to think about it. This is the one slide that's going to convince the customer to go along with it. This is the email uh, that tells you, you you've got the deal. This is the way we got um, uh, Bob, who for the first time was able to 
question what Marsha was doing, and Marsha agreed and so on. All these moments of creations make who comes in the room virtual or not. Yeah. And what comes out of the room differently. So to me, it's you, we've been given, you know, opposable thumb, very important if you want to use your iPhone. Um, and we've been given the ability to think, which means we have to think how to think. And we have the ability to create and, and, and celebrate the creation and realize that when you as a leader badly create, then just say, my bad. Yes. And you'll see people rallying to you Brilliant. Um, uh, because we all have, have limitations. And one last thing, sorry, I'm very bad with respect to counting, is admitting your limitation in all form is a, fine, is, is a form of strength. Wow. Yeah. Asking for help is a form of strength, properly done and what have you. Um, uh, for those of, of uh, you who have teenagers and what have you, and the pre-teenagers and so on, and you know who you are, um, uh, telling them that it's okay to not think they can solve everything alone, to have limitation is a good thing. Because if you have limitations, you're going to ask for others to help you. And, and together, you're going to create more. Wow. So think how to think, build on your limitations, um, and celebrate creation. Beautiful. That got really deep. And I, I'm not a religious man myself, but amen to that. You know, that's, yeah. that was very powerful stuff there. And I, I love the idea of uh, creativity being some form of expression of divinity. You know, uh, it's, um, I, I think you're right. You know, that, that feeling you get when you do create something elegant, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you know, uh, you, 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 you paint a house and it looks nicer and you look into the backyard. I mean, why do people enjoy doing your gardening? Yeah. Is it, uh, do I want to get dirty and think about the mosquito thing and how the heck do I remove the dirt underneath my finger and I'm not supposed to do this and so on and so on. But yeah. you look at this and say, it's different because I was here. That's, that's the power. That's, that's the power. It's different. It's different because I was here. I did the stuff and it had an impact. And uh, Beautiful. Excellent. And that's a beautiful uh, note to finish on, I think. So thank you for your time. Sure. And uh, and I and I look forward to kind of reviewing this podcast because there's some real real juicy bits, if I may say that myself. And uh, and, I, and maybe we can arrange a time to talk about the kind of AI uh, and and big data stuff as well uh, on, sure. a, on, a, on a second one. So thank, you like thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Well, it was great speaking to Alain. He's a witty character with a great sense of humour in a sea of knowledge. Speaking to him before and after the podcast revealed a rich history and a journey in more detail than was presented here. Though these podcasts are focused around the tech leaders community and sharing learning amongst it, for me the most interesting bit sometimes is about the person and how they got to be where they are now. So anyway, my key takeaways from the session were as follows. Documentation. That old chestnut. Documentation is actually important. Speaking to the agile values of delivering work over comprehensive documentation still stands, but it's about finding the right balance. It shows that there is value in it. It does bring value. And it's good to speak with somebody who's always looking for that right balance. And my second key takeaway is around thinking about the way we think in service of the problem we are trying to solve i.e. the thinking in one arena is not always creating the right, correct mental models for overcoming the challenge in another area. So, think about your thinking. And thirdly, I love the statement that the job of a tech leader is not to create just technology, but to create business options. Again, this points to the tech leader's role in moulding the future of organisations. In the current era, that's more important than ever. So there were many more takeaways but these are the big ones for me. What do you think? Please let us know in the comments. And thank you again, Alain. And finally, before I leave you, remember to subscribe to CTO Confessions Podcast and IT Labs newsletter, where you get regular tech articles and invites to the IT Labs webinar series. URLs for this can be found at the bottom of this page. We are consistently creating material to create, support and nurture a community of tech leaders. And of course, if you want to know more about the services that IT Labs provide, including our Teams as a Service service, please don't hesitate to get in touch. As mentioned in the intro, please think of us like Tech Leader's favourite off-the-shelf service, providing quality, high-performing teams off-the-shelf with a wide breadth of knowledge and skill. Well, that's all, folks. 
Look after each other and keep safe. Wishing you all a good day or evening from IT Labs wherever you are in the world. From everyone at IT Labs, live well and prosper until we meet again on the next CTO Confessions podcast.